Okay, you guys. Thanks for letting me be here, Ms. Castleman, and your class here. Um, I'm Kelly McRae, or Gray. Depends on what day of the week it is. Um, which last name I go by. Um, I'm here because I am um, part of a reading class through Western New Mexico University, and one of my assignments is to do a video project. This is nothing that you're graded on. I'm the one getting the grade, so don't just kind of chill out, relax, and kind of just go with the flow here. So my assignment is to videotape a lesson for you. Um, to give you a little bit of background from where I come from, I grew up in Albuquerque. Uh, I have a degree from the University of New Mexico in microbiology. Um, that was a few years ago. I won't say how many. But after that, I worked in clinical and research microbiology uh, in laboratories mostly in Albuquerque for about 22 years. And now I'm in the kind of the transition phase of wanting to go into teaching now. And um, one of the requirements for getting alternative licensure in New Mexico is to take this particular reading class, just as um, your teacher is also taking the class. So thanks again for giving me some class time. It's like, it's, it's, really, it's really an honor to be here. What my lesson is on is what I call the language of science. So it doesn't, doesn't matter what um, subject that you're teaching or that you're learning or you're being taught, um, there's always certain particular words and phrases in there that are unique to that, to that area of study. So in the language of science, though, typical scientific words sometimes can be really long, big, long, complicated words. And sometimes, according to some sources that I've, that I've checked out, um, those complicated words kind of scare people away from science. It's like, I don't want to go into science because they got those long, furry words and they're so complicated and I never know what they mean. But actually, the key to learning science words is to break them down into their little component parts. You'll find that most of them have, and as I, I handed out, um, a prefix, suffix, and a root word list. Uh, it's a whole list of just the little, the little chunks, the little parts of the words that help you understand the overall meaning of the word. And if you look through it, and the more we go through this, you'll see that a lot of those little parts of words are going to be found in words outside of science. And I'll give you a couple of examples of that towards the end. So um, what I'd like to do is kind of just give you a couple of examples of, of what I'm talking about and, and what I want to show you. And then I'm going to ask you guys to, to go through and do a couple of them, either on your own or you guys can, can cheat and work with a person next to you, that kind of thing. So. First one I'm going to start off with is super simple, super easy. Um, my basic degree that I got, I got a bachelor's degree in biology. Okay, what is biology? Sorry, to what? Louder, here. Study of life is what we say. Yes. If you look at look at your list and you see bio, just the just the just the little chunk piece of word bio. Anytime you see bio, whether it's bio biology, biologist, biochemistry, bio means life. That's all it means. Now, that's this part of it. The logy L O G Y is what study of study of. Okay. So what I'll do instead of the end of the lesson, I'll just go ahead and do this right now. Um, so biology, study of life. What if somebody said, hey, do you want to take a, what's this word? Sociology. Sociology. Well, you know all, off the bat, it's the study of something. It doesn't have anything to do with really with biology, really, in the technical sense. but. So socio, what is that? Study of what? Do you know, have you, any of you taken a sociology class? Or know what it is? Obviously not. It's the study of society, or societies. I never took it because it just sounded boring, so I never took it. 
But um, have you ever heard of uh, anthropology? Ever heard of it? Anthropologists like study caveman and prehistoric times and all that. Your logi is a study of, and anthro, the prefix part of it, just means man, study of man. Like from all the way back in the, in the beginning, whenever that was. So let me give you another example up here. And get really hard now. My area of specific study and what I worked in for many years, oops, microbiology. Look at your list. What is what does microbiology small mean? Study of small, thing. small things like microbiology. What do you think of? Small, small, tiny bacteria. bacteria, cells, the microscope. Be able to look at them because they're that small. Atoms. Uh, microbiology includes the study of bacteria. Yeah, you're right. Bacteria, viruses, funguses, different parasites that you hear about in the news that infect people, people's brains and things like that. Um, it's also really this. Also, it, uh, it includes cell biology, study of the cells. So. Actually, a lot of microbiology, um, a lot of, some of it is still looking under the microscope, but a lot of it today, with advancing technology, um, there really is there's a lot of microbiology that involves biochemistry. Okay, so. What do you think of when you think of chemistry? You taking a chemistry class yet? You have chemistry. You have chemistry classes here. Have you guys taken any yet? No. Chemistry like test tubes and people setting their hands on fire and explosions and all kinds of crazy stuff. So you haven't taken chemistry yet. It's a study of chemicals and atoms and molecules and structure. But biochemistry has to do with all of that, but relating to the uh, study of life, too. So microbiology really involves a lot of biochemistry. In fact, when I was getting my degree in microbiology, a lot of it was biochemistry, just a lot. Um, but I was glad when I was done with that um, the biochemistry part of it, because it was just like, wow, kind of overwhelming. But with that in mind, knowing now that you know what microbiology is and that it involves a lot of biochemistry. Let's go on to, let's see. Here's a good one. Next word. <laughs> Couldn't resist this one. This is a fun one. How do you say it? How do you pronounce it? Anybody? This is kind of like that Ferris Bueller movie, uh, movie where the teacher says, everyone, everyone. How do you say it? Uh, Todd? I have no idea. Herpetology. Just, if it, if it looks long and kind of, kind of crazy looking, break it down. You already know what this is. There's a T in there. But herpetology. Or herpetology. But look at your list and what does this first part refer to? Creepy crawling. Oh, I thought it was something else. <laughs> like what? Herpes. <laughs> um, well, it's, I guess herpes is kind of creepy crawly, but. Um, <laughs> and herpes is a virus, by the way, which I actually know a lot about. Not, not that I've ever had it, but we, I did. we did a lot of diagnosis of, of herpes. Um, but a herpes on your list it says that the, the first portion of it means creepy crawly. And actually, in the animal, think about the animal kingdom, okay? Just think about going out there in nature. 
What are the creepy crawling ones? Tarantulas. Insects. Mm, tarantulas close. Think of lizards. It's actually the study of reptiles. There you go. So, study of reptiles. Just remember, anytime you see L O G Y, it means it's the study of. Reptiles don't crawl. Yeah. <laughs> Snakes don't. They crawl. Snakes don't. Lizards do. They know. Some, some snakes have legs. Did you know that? <laughs> so. Why do snake have legs? Anyway. So, if. The thing is a snake with legs. If L O G Y means study of. Then the gist is what? He's the person who studies it. It's the person who studies it. Yeah, so he's this exactly specializes in the study of reptiles. Of creepy crawlies. You got it. Okay. I'm just giving you a couple more here. Do you know all of these by memory? Oh, yeah. This is nothing. You should see. And this, that's a good, I'm going to bring that up right now. The list that I've given you is just like a little tiny blip in, in all of the prefixes, root words, and suffixes. But these are the real basic ones because you're going to see them not just in a biology class or not just here today. You're going to see, you're going to see some of these, these pieces of words in other, in other classes too. How about... As a microbiologist, I have studied pathogens. Disease. Okay, patho, the portion of that I means to to disease. Disease creates. Right, so what, in, in simpler words, what would you think it's that means? Disease. It's a disease that is grown? No, it's creating an animated disease. Or maybe it's an uh, evolution. Disease. <laughs> well, if, if the gen part of it means that that uh, it's it's giving it's something that's giving rise to or causing something that's causing the disease. What what is what causes herpes? Sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Or, or maybe it's like, maybe your parents had it before you were born. Okay. Yeah. Kissing. There you go, Ty. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> okay, kissing, sex. But what is the actual, <laughs> those are the modes of transmission. Yeah. Okay. Which are, which are actually known <laughs> as, as vectors, but this is not part of the lesson. But that, that's like modes of transmission through sex and kissing, contact of different kinds of stuff. Right? <laughs> but, but the actual disease causing agent is the herpes simplex virus. That's the name of the virus. And there's, they've broken it down into classes one and two, depending on whether it's above the belt, below the belt, that kind of thing. Um, but this is the actual pathogen that causes the cold sores on your lips or causes other things in that other realm that is not part of this lesson. So, so a pathogen really is, is any disease causing agent. Okay, so say you got food poisoning. There's a pathogen. Okay, so you went over to Blake's Lotta Burger. Do you have a Blake's here? Yeah, out of town. Okay, if you went to Blake's Lotta Burger and say there was just like that one person who wasn't real cool about washing their hands, you know, and they're going, you know, after they went to the, and you know, they came out, they didn't observe the sign that says all employees must wash their hands before returning to work. And they just, whatever, and they come back in, they start working with the food again. They might contaminate your food with something, but you're going to eat that food, right? And you're going to get sick. You might get food poisoning some kind. So whatever that it could be like most typically it's gonna be 
a bacteria that causes food poisoning? Most often. So, say for example, have you heard of salmonella? Have yeah. you heard of salmonella poisoning? What if you have gloves on, can you still get it? Like, if you know how they're doing it with the food and everything, and they have gloves on them? Mm, it depends. I mean, you could be, yeah, you have to be wearing the gloves, but if you're not that careful about what you touch when you have the gloves on, that could, you could still, you could still transmit it you, if you, you know, if you touch something um, that has, say, like a, a pathogen on it, even if you have the gloves on, if you touch it, it's on the gloves, you go touch something else, you're still transmitting it. So, how about, you hear about, this has been big in the news lately, listeria, like in produce, like uh, fruits and vegetables, things like that. Anyway, all of these are considered pathogens, disease-causing um, bacteria, viruses, agents, whatever you want to call them. Um, so on that note, I'm going to give you one more before we do some um, kind of like assigned stuff. Um, that's a, must be a C. Anybody want to take a stab on how to say that? You see it in the news a lot too. Carcinogen. Carcinogen. Mm. Okay. Carcinogen. Oh, you know what? She's right. I screwed up. Thank you. You are so right. You get the gold star for today. Ta-da. Carson. <laughs> oh, Jen, look at your list. Okay. Uh, okay, Carson O. And what did we say Jen meant? The uh, create or get for it. Mm -hmm. It's where it's from. Okay. Like cancer-causing agents, a carcinogen. There's things in the environment, radiation. Um, Chemicals, different things that can cause a cancer or a can a cancerous tumor in a person's body is considered a carcinogen. What about the sun? The sun. The sun can cause cancer, right? Sun cancer. Yeah. Sun, sun cancer. Skin cancer. Skin cancer. Or driving water bottles that were left in the car, they said. And if it's water. <laughs> yeah. Well, because the plastic chemicals get into the water and something like that? It cause, it can yeah. cause. So anything that can cause a cancer is considered a carcinogen. Okay. So, just real quick then, what I want to do, some cancer. <coughs> skin cancer, it's called the blood. <laughs> that's where it comes from, you're going to get it from the sun. So, what I'm going to give you guys, and you can write these down, uh, let's see, who do I want to use here? This one's pretty... I didn't even know what one was until I had one done almost, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. Gold bladder. What's, you got, you got the surgery? Being removed. But how do you say it? Yeah. Just say it? Gold bladder removed. Just say it. Okay, how do you pronounce this? Go ahead, Kenny. I'm good. Thank you, sir. Holy cystectomy! That was good. Whoever said it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> me. Yeah, here's, so, so, that was me. There you go. So, so here's here's the basic breakdown of it. Okay, Coley means bile. You know how we have bile in our in our bodies? In your in your gallbladder, it's just your gallbladder is just a little sac and it holds bile. What does bile do? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Right. It's for, it's, it's, bile is produced by your by your liver, okay, and it's just a kind of a goopy. It's all that stuff. What it does is it helps it helps break down fats. Like if you eat a big old greasy burger, a complex burger, and there's fat in it. Um, the gallbladder it releases, it releases some bile, and what it does is it cuts down the or breaks down the fat so you can digest it. Cyst. If you look on your sheet, what, is that, what does it say for S or C-Y-S-T? 
Bladder. Bladder. It doesn't have to be your urinary bladder. It can be any kind of bladder. Bladder is just a sac. Okay. And then, of course, ectomy means removal of. So what is a bisectomy? What's what? A bisectomy? A bisectomy? <laughs> it's a word. It's, it is? What? Isn't it when they take Siamese twins or conjoined twins apart? Yeah, I think it's a word. Oh, you're teaching me now. See, and I'm still a student, so you guys can teach me today. And you can also, you can give me any input on how to make my kind of, my lesson like this more interesting too, if you want to give me some feedback, feedback after we're done. Um, but a bisectomy? Uh, isn't it mean to split something into two? Yeah. I would think so. Yeah. So, like you say, yeah. By separating. Like, 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 no, that's vasectomy. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound right. I think you're getting your one. No. VAS <laughs> vasectomy, that's, uh, yeah, for, so that's a boy operation. Uh, well, let's go back to bisectomy. <laughs> bisectomy. Okay, so separating the Siamese twins. Have you ever seen the programs? I've seen them. I've seen them. Some people, they cannot be separated because they're like joined at the heads and they share brain, the brain, brain, brain something like sure that. There was. But a lot of times if they're just joined at, you know, at the sides yeah. or the hips, whatever, and depending on and they how much, them. yeah. So if, if there's one who's like using, I guess who has more of the uh, main organs, then if they separate them, they might have to think one about Separate, yeah, sacrificing one for the other. That, that kind of into of medical ethics and all that stuff. It's those ones are crying. It's, I know, it's, it's very kind of it's interesting. Um, it's like, okay. Uh, did you get a bisectomy? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, so, anyway, if you have this removed, <laughs> the reason you have people have these removed is because. Sometimes, over time, this bile builds up into what they call gallstones. Oh, dear. My mom had gallstones. They're extremely painful. Yeah, she reminds me. There's also, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't, they don't, they don't even form as a stone. They just floor, form as this, kind of like this mushy stuff. There's a very technical term oh, for it. Do you want to know what it is? This is the technical term. You might want to write this. Yeah. Gallstone is. Gallstone is. It's actually called, sludge. medically it's called sludge. <laughs> Gall sludge. But I, I had the stones and had, a, had my gallbladder out and things are much better. Do you make all of that? Yeah. You know, yeah. Just a gallbladder? That's, isn't that what you have a baby? What's that? Just all the ovaries. I'm sorry, never mind. I held the baby in the bladder, but it's the ovaries. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and you had the kids. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. why I always get a mixed up. You, you, have, you hold the baby in the uterus. See? So it's the ovaries. Ovaries. The See? We're all mixed up here. Sorry, Mr. Simon. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so you I'm going to write down, doctor. just for the sake of yeah, time, I'm, I'm just going to write down well, three words up here, and I want you guys to decide for me. All right. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I don't think I'm going to use that one. Okay. This is a fun one. You guys will have fun with this one. Are you laughing? Yes. She knows what it means. <laughs> Air moves. It's not very funny. Those go. Right, so it's air movement, stone. Condition. Condition. Air condition. Air condition. It's on what you call it. It's air movement, stone, and condition. It's air conditioner. It's an air conditioner? Yeah. And then there's thrombosis. And. Oh. Thrombosis. This one you're not going to have. Clock. Where are you guys getting blood clot? The stone from. Isn't it's it just air movement condition? No, look, it's L A A L, but then it. There is no H in there. There's no H, no H though. Ah, oh, oh, no very H. good. There's not an H. That's H exactly right. H A L I T O S I S. That's that's what you need to notice. You you don't have the L I T H in there, so it's something totally different. So it's air movement condition. Hopefully. 
condition. I don't care. It's a blood clot condition. Now on this one, uh, when you guys were out in the hallway, your teacher mentioned polygon. What does it mean? Eight-sided. Six-sided. Okay, what does the poly mean? Oh wait, no. Just many in shape. Many, just in general. Many. Many. Sides. Okay, many. Okay. Many <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> okay. Okay. What? What? Have you Have you ever heard of a different term for like your fingers and toes? Oh, phalanges. That's good. <laughs> That's good. But I'm looking for another one too. Um, okay. There, there's also another name for numbers. It starts with a D. Digit. Digit. Digits. Digits. Digits from the back of the room. Flanges. Flanges. There you go. No, you guys are right. So. Many digits. So polydactyly, I'm going to give this one to you. Many fingers. So why would there be, if you went into a medical dictionary, and you were cruising through one day because you were bored because your internet was down. It's like you had no signal. And you decided to get out of a medical dictionary and you just opened up the P's and you saw, ooh, polydactyly. Why would that word be in there? And why would it be important medically? Many fingers. Mutations. Hmm? Mutations. Exactly. Now what what would the mutation cause? Many fingers. Uh, many fingers. <laughs> like how many? Uh, like eight, eight, six. Like more than five. Well, yeah, one hand. Yeah. There's but there's eight. actually, but one day, you know, I picked this word because last week the wind was so hard and blowing so hard into your sea that my internet went down. And I opened up a medical dictionary to the bees. And there's polydactyly. And they actually had pictures. There's like a picture of a hand. It looks like a normal hand, but there's a thumb growing out of it. <laughs> or an extra pinky off to the side. It can happen on the feet too, but that's polydactyly. Okay, so. Many fingers, but that's just one, so it's not many. Well, you can have it's more than you one. Can have, you could have like maybe 12. two or three thumbs growing out, you know, maybe one That'd ear. Cool. One. That'd be sick. But it's all based on, it's, it's all a mutation type thing. It's, it can either be a, you know, it can either be a genetic thing, genetic mutation. Or it could be because somebody's been exposed to a cancer-causing agent, also known as a pathogen. 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 Oh. I can't even spell it. Sinogen. Okay. But anyway, that's. You guys get the basic gist of it. Yeah. So you see the words polyologies. I just look on your second page here. Um, any any time you see itis, it's like irritation or inflammation of. Uh, ology is a study of osis, usually a progressing condition. Okay. Instead of. I don't want this lesson to go on too much longer because I know you guys. Not school. You guys, you guys, you guys need quality time with your teacher. But okay, flow of air. Where where does air flow from in and out of? On your body. Oh. I mean, we're talking this kind of air. Oh. Air. We're breathing. So why, why would you, why would you want to talk about somebody's, when would you want to talk about somebody's breath and tell them that they have halitosis? Fluid stinks. You know who we're on saying you have halitosis? They're not going to say that. That's a polite way. That's the, that's the, that's the medical way of saying, instead of saying, hey, dude, you got bad breath, you can go up to them politely and say, excuse me, but you have a slight case of halitosis. They just, they just walk away. Just be like, uh, that way, they have to go home, or either ask somebody else, or they have to go home and look it up. Or well, maybe they'll just think it's a good thing. No, they're just going to be like, what does it mean? I'm not going to tell you. Just on your own time, look it up. Maybe they'll figure it out. Thrombosis. So what's thrombosis? You guys tell me. Yeah, it's like thrombosis. 
What's wrong? What's what happens with what's why is a blood clot a big deal? So we stop go. blood flow. Yeah, blood cuts help you stop your bleeding, and then they what is it? They make a little scab there, and they like make that's that's back. part of it. But what if it happens that on the inside they of the artery? Can die. Die. What does it do? What does a what does a blood clot do it, to your it blood? It blocks blood? your blood. blood. Yeah. What if it blocks it to your head? What happens? And then you die. Die. go yeah. brain dead. No. Okay. Ninety nine percent of, of strokes are caused by blood clots because of. Um, lessen blood flow to uh, one side of the brain because depending on where the blood clot was. And why does that happen? Why does the other side just share? Like, <laughs> why does it happen? I think you should become. I think you should become. All of this. I think you should become a. Hematologist. A brain study, the study of the brain. Hemo um, means blood. I think you should become a hematologist or, or do a little study on it and then you can come back and tell your class. You should shut the toilet stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys kind of, you get the gist of, of the whole thing, it's, it's, uh, it's a lesson in just in breaking the words down, making them simpler, and you can smarter. start. In, in, yeah, you sound smart, you are smarter, and, and it's all good. And people will get mad at you. you just be like, all right. <laughs> so.